Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Marcia Meskimen. I'm the director of the Institute of Advanced Studies here at Loughborough, and it's my pleasure to welcome you if I'm welcoming you virtually or if I'm welcoming you in the room to this hybrid event today here at International House of the IAS, um, where we are welcoming one of our IAS residential fellows, Igor Frere, who will be talking to us today and um, uh, following a what I understand Sam was a wonderful, exciting, and very, very lively postgraduate forum in which he filled our board with fantastic and amazing equations and um, uh, formula. And I am really looking forward to having a very visual and exciting lecture in that sense as well today. Um, the IAS established only two years ago um, residential fellowships where we uh, were happy to be able to welcome outstanding scholars from around the world uh, for a full month periods residents um, in Loughborough to work with other colleagues in um, areas across the university. And Igor is one of these uh, um, scholars who has come to us as a residential fellow and has been able to um, find, uh, I, I take it from the lively conversation, a real home in mathematical sciences with us for this period of time. And we are really delighted both to welcome you to the IAS and also to welcome you here. And it's my very great um, pleasure to um, turn over to my colleague from mathematical sciences, Alexander Veselov, who's going to do um, an introduction more specifically to Igor's research and what he's been doing here um, since his fellowship before we hear from Igor. So without any further ado, Alexander, over to you. And um, yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it is indeed my great pleasure to introduce Professor Igor Leiter Freire uh, from Federal University of San Carlos, Brazil. Um, uh, Professor Freire got his uh, uh, PhD in applied math um, in State University of Campinas and habilitation in math from the University of San Paulo. So he was uh, uh, vice provost for research at the Federal University of ABC, which means... Well, ABC is a region in the great Sao Paulo, right. which is, uh, the A comes from Saint André. Yes. Saint Andrews. Saint Bernardo, uh -huh. Saint Bernardo, uh -huh. and Saint Caetano, so ABC. Right. That's why. Right. So, and uh, uh, in 2017, uh, 2018, he was pri vice president for the Brazilian Society uh, for the um, uh, Computational and uh, Applied Mass. His uh, um, research interests are uh, very broad um, and uh, closely linked to the interest of our geometry and mathematical uh, research group in mass department at Plavbara. Um, so broadly, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, originated uh, probably um, in differential geometry and mathematical physics in relation with integrable system. But recently, he got interested uh, in, uh, in the analysis of PDEs. Um, um, including uh, uh, conservation laws, and uh, uh, which is of course related to integrability, as well as uh, local and global well boldness of uh, Cauchy problem. So special interest um, um, uh, Igor has in uh, um, uh, particularly interested in 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 shallow water equation of Kamasa Holm type, including the generalization, which was found by our uh, very own Vladimir Novikov, which was another reason for Igor to visit Lovebury, which we are very uh, happy to um, have him here. And uh, today uh, he will talk about some of his uh, work about uh, this title, Unique Continuation of solution of certain evolution equation. Yes, please. Oh. 
Thank you, Sasha and Marsha, for your introduction. I am very happy to be here. And actually, it has been an amazing time, this period that I am here, and I am very grateful to you. And I would also like to thank you for coming and thank you for everyone who's attending this talk uh, in a virtual way. Well, um, my talk today uh, probably is considered as an analysis talk. Okay, analysis of partial differential equations talk. This is one of the things that I have been working here in Loughborough. Okay. I was also work, I have been also work in geometric problems, but I decided to deliver this talk because with this particular talk, I can be intuitive, of course, for my colleagues from mathematics, I will apologize because until certain time, I will sacrifice rigor and formality in order to make myself clear to people outside mathematics. But more or less by the middle of my talk until its end, I apologize for the others outside mathematics because I will then need to be formal and rigorous to show and discuss my results. So I try to make a balance between them, intuition, rigor, formality, etc., in order to deliver to you this talk, okay? Well, as I mentioned, it would be, it was thought for a very generic audience, okay? And in red are the portions of my talk in which I will be more uh, intuitive than rigorous, okay? And then I will introduce the problem. I will explain why we consider this sort of model, okay, models. And then I will try to make a turn, I will start to make a transition between this more intuitive part to a more technical one in which I use physical ideas in order to solve a mathematical problems. And then I'll show you my, what I, part of what I have been doing here, and this will be very technical, right? Well, my talk is motivated by an equation that was derived to describe a physical phenomenon. And my talk is also uh, uh, influenced by a question that I put to myself, thinking in terms of the physics behind the phenomenon. Okay, and to understand this, I must understand why, uh, how can I mathematically describe a physical phenomenon? Although most of my analysis is more concerned with mathematics, okay? So when I have a phenomenon, what should I take into account? One can be neglected. Okay. For example, if you put water in a recipient, okay, and you touch the surface of water, we will see uh, the propagation of the disturbance that you provoke. Okay. Well, if you are, if the water is inside a recipient, that propagation, that way, those waves, the waves, they will find the boundaries that you reflect and interact one to each other. So if I wanted to describe the movement of water uh, inside a recipient, I must take into account that I have a boundary, okay? And I have a phenomenon that is evolving a long time, right? If I am analyzing, if I am observing something in the ocean, perhaps the boundary is not so relevant, at least for, uh, at least depending on what I am concerned, okay? 
and more because here for example uh, and another thing <laughs> because if i want to describe how this wave starts from this position and evolves to a singularity the wave breaking i must propose a model that is able to describe how that wave evolves to that singular thing right well and here in particular we have this i have that wave and that wave breaks okay i am not exactly interested here in how uh the wave breaks and actually i am not interested here in a wave breaking but i am interested here in a model that was proposed to describe uh, waves in water and in particular it describes wave breaking okay someone may argue with me ah but is that model really describing this sort of a wave break okay uh, this we can discuss later but of course it's a model that in principle should describe something in this direction okay well and more because if i take a careful look and at this picture uh, it's not working you see that although my wave is a two-dimensional wave in the sense that i uh, here i have a surface okay in a sense my wave i could approximate it as a many copies of one thing propagating only one direction okay and that's why we can imagine that a model to describe certain waves not all waves but certain waves can be obtained as the following i have the wave i put a plane here and see the movement of that wave when it crossed that plane okay and what i will see is something like this and this is what we call a one-dimensional model we will discuss here models that describes waves in this way okay my particular attention will be the kamasa home equation which is given uh in this way here okay this equation was proposed as a shallow water model uh, in this paper although the equation itself was discovered earlier okay and here t denotes time x denotes space and u is the rate of the water's surface okay essentially u will be the elevation of the, the wave, okay? Well, what we will discuss here, although it was designed and thought, and thought firstly for the kamasa home equation, it can be applied to other models, such as the BBM equation, okay? and a very recent equation called rotation kamasa home equation and in particular what i would describe here uh, has not been considered for this equation the rotation kamasa home and i will show here some results by the end of my talk which covers what i'll show you to this equation in a more general framework right well, so my problem, I could see it in the following way. If I take a look to this picture, okay, how this picture could help me to answer the following question. Imagine that I have a solution of the Kamasa home equation, a valid solution. I will characterize later what I mean by a valid solution of the Kamasa home equation, okay? And suppose that I can find an open set, 
okay? My solution is defined in here, time and space, okay? And I can find uh, a subset here on the domain of the solution in which my solution vanishes here. Once I know this, what can I tell you about the behavior of the solution outside this region? Okay. This is what people who works with analysis of partial differential equations calls unique continuation. Actually, in, in thinking in a general way, a unique con continuation is something like, okay, if I have two solutions of the equation, and there's these two solutions, they agree on an open set. What can I tell uh, about them outside that set? Here, I am in a more restrictive condition, okay, because I am telling you that my solution vanishes on an open set, and I will explain later uh, the reason in which, uh, the reason by, uh, the reason that I am here in a very stricter, a very stricter, stricter condition, okay? In a sense, my problem is, take a look at this picture, okay? How can I realize what is happening? What is happening is, if I fix my eyes here, uh, don't, they, don't, don't pay attention to this or for that. If I fix my eyes here and I observe it in a con dur during a continuous period of time and my solution is stopping, my system is stopping, how from this observation I can infer the information for my solution in different place in different times, okay? Well, uh, this question itself is not exactly new, okay? We have some works in the literature dealing with very, very close problems, Sir, but this talk, I could say that this, this talk is a side effect of a paper published in 2020 by Linares and Pons, in which they considered the question as I put here. And in particular, they considered the equation, uh, they, they considered solutions of the Kamasa home belonging to this space. Okay. And their proof was essentially a proof using uh, techniques from, from partial differential equations. And when I read their paper, which I really liked at that paper, I asked myself, because I am a physicist, and I asked myself, can I derive, can I reobtain that, their answer, avoiding the techniques from partial differential equations, but considering the physics behind the model, or the integral properties of the equations, that is, can I use the conservation laws of the equation in order to give a different demonstration of Linares and Spons's work? And the answer is yes, I can, okay? The two main reference for my talk is just the paper by Linares and Pons and my own paper in which instead of using only techniques of partial differential equations, I use the conservation of energy to solve the problem, okay? Well, so how can I deal with the problem? The first thing is I will consider the Kamasa home equation in this way. Why in this way? Because the Kamasa home equation, something like this, we have, this part plus something equals zero. But this term involves the Helmholtz operator, okay? And I can invert this operator, okay? And when I invert this operator, I can see the equation as a, 
uh, a dynamical system in certain Banach space. Okay. Well, here, this term, this new term here, is the convolution of this function. Okay. And this is very important for us because the convolution essentially is looking for information in the whole space. It's not only local thing, but it is looking for everywhere and it's bringing information from everywhere, okay? And also I will consider this quantity which is a conservation law, or in my case, I will consider it as a conservation of energy of the system, okay? In the integrable systems, this is one of the Hamiltonians of the Kamasa home equation, okay? And the fact that this quantity is conserved, and in particular, it's conserved for the class of solutions that I am considering, and here, for example, a class of solutions that I am considering uh, includes the, those defined in Sobolev space. For these solutions, this point is conserved, is invariant, okay? So, okay, we can see again the original question and put it in a, in a better form. I will assume that I have a solution here. This solution exists until certain time. Okay, I don't care here if my solution is local or global, okay? I, I, I only need that it exists for some time. I am not worried if the solution may or not develop any singularity, okay? I will assume that my solution goes to zero at infinity very fast, in particular for solutions in Sobolev space everything here uh, is satisfied, okay? And then I have the problem as I mentioned earlier. Well, since I have this open set here in which I know the solution vanishes, I will consider a smaller subset here, okay? Not exactly closed, not exactly open, Yeah, 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 yeah. No, because since I am considered an open, I can suppose that it is of that form, actually, there is no problem, okay? But it's important to include these two points, A and B. That's why I took this smaller set inside my, my set, okay? It is crucial for what we will discuss. Well, we have our equation written in this non-local form. And I will fix the a time. Okay. And for this fix a time, I will construct a space dependent function. And, uh, and this is a local function and a non-local function, F capital. And you can see that this function is here in the equation and this function is here. Oh, no, but the, the equation I'm considering for, a, for arbitrary T and X. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. It's missing. Yes, yes. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. There, there is a convolution there. Okay. So here, essentially, I am constricting things that come from the equation. And I have some ob uh, important observations because since my solution vanishes here, my small, my function f, when I fix this value of time, this function vanishes here.
This is very important. And my non-local function f, if I take a careful look here and replace x by a and b and then make the difference, I will obtain this expression. Okay, let us call this difference, let us denote it by, by s, okay? This function f is very important and it is strictly positive outside this interval. What happens to this function inside this interval is irrelevant. Why? Because I am considering integration and my function f is zero inside the integral and this function s is bounded. So what really is important to me is what happens, is what happens to s outside this interval, okay? Oh, again, it is missing the, the star for the convolution. Well, and given that this is F capital, when I am in this open set, my function F capital is zero. It vanishes. In particular, it vanishes when I consider X being A or being B, okay? And then what we have here is, we have this difference. We have this fact. The fact that the F evaluated at B and A is zero is irrelevant. What is really relevant here is the fact that they are equal because then I have this, I can split my integral. Here, I don't have any contribution. And the remaining part forced me to conclude that F is zero, but F, be, F is zero everywhere. But F being zero implies that U is zero at this time. Okay. Well, but if U is zero at this time, it means that any time in my open set for any time, I, if I project here on this axis, any time here, will, my solution is zero when I consider this time. And then I have uh, an answer or at least a partial answer, answer to my question. And I was able to have this answer using the fact that using the convolution. Okay. So an answer to my question is, okay, it vanishes uh, in a strip containing my original open set. The question is, is this, the best thing I can tell you about my solution U, because my intention was to describe my solution everywhere. Okay, I, I can describe the solution here, but something is missing, okay? And I can, I really can describe outside this strip when I use the conservation of energy. Why? Because the, from the conservation of energy, I have the invariance of energy and I know that at T star, my energy vanishes and then my energy is zero everywhere, which means that my solution is zero everywhere. Okay, so if I am able to find, if I have a solution of the kamasa home equation, which vanishes on an open set, this will imply that my solution is zero everywhere because I don't have energy. I don't have movement. I don't have a perturbation of my system, okay? And this is a complete answer. And 
why this figure, this picture helps us to understand and answer the problem. When I look at this picture, I see movement. And if I see movement, it implies that I have energy. And if I have energy, it cannot be zero, okay? And this is the physical motivation to solve the problem, okay? Well, so only collecting the things that I used here to solve the problem, and then we will see what comes next. I used this form of the equation, use the non-local form. Here is missing the convolution, okay? I use this relation. What is really important is this relation. And then we find a time, we found a time in which the solution is zero everywhere. And from the energy, the solution is zero, not only everywhere, but at end time. Okay. Well, this has a, a, an interesting consequence. The consequence is I cannot have a solution of the Kamasa home equation that is compactly supported in time and space. I cannot have, because if I had, it would be zero. Okay, so a non-trivial solution of the Kamasa home equation cannot be compactly supported, okay? But the question is, it is very well known that the, sol the, the solutions of the Kamasa home equation they cannot be compactly, spatially compactly supported at more than one time, which is different to say that the solution is compactly supported in time and space, okay? So it means that we cannot have a solution of the Kamasa home equation that has this behavior, let us say t equals to zero and t equals to one with to zero different of to one, okay? This situation cannot happen. The first to prove this fact was Adrian Constantin. Uh, shortly after, we had a different demonstration given by David Henry for the same problem. And later we have uh, an, an, an even more different demonstration of this fact due to Himonas, Misiolek, Pons, and Zoom. okay? The question is, can we establish the same result? That is, the Kamasa home equation cannot have uh, spatially compa compacted supported solutions uh, using the ideas I show you, I have shown you in my presentation. This is an open question. I don't know the answer, okay? It is natural to ask, but I have no idea uh, if it's true or not. No, the main result uh, of these papers is the following. If you fix time, okay, you will find at most one time in which the solution is compactly supported. In any other time, the solution, the, the perturbation, if you, you think in terms of physics, the perturbation spread in the entire space. Okay. Yes, 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 you cannot have, okay. Well, and given this, what I have been doing here at Lotbro, in regard to this sort of problems. I am considering this equation. Why this equation? So, to, it seems more or less artificial, arbitrary, etc. Well, in some sense it is, but in some sense it is very convenient. Why? Because depending on the choices of, for the functions f and j, I have the Kamasa home equation. 
I have another equation called Dye's equation, which describes waves propagating in, in material media, which is an equation very similar to the Kamasa home equation. And I also have that Kamasa home type equation, which was deduced four years ago, considering Coriolis effect. Okay. So I am working on this equation because then I can treat every uh, 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 these examples in a unified way. Okay. And there are two open questions regarding this equation. One is if we can prove a unique continuation result for it, as in the sense that I described it today. And the other is, okay, does it have compatible supported solutions here considered for fixed times? Okay. Well, the answer is for the first the first answer I solved it. Okay. The first answer is if these two functions satisfy these three conditions. Okay. And if I can find a time in which this and this happens, okay, here H and F capital are defined here, okay, if this happens, then the solution is zero, okay. Well, the problem now is, uh, is it possible when this happens and the answer is given here given the same conditions for the functions f and j and now i am considering solutions in solar space okay if i can find a non-empty set in which my solution vanishes then u is trivial because on an empty set these conditions required in this theorem here they are all satisfied. And look, I don't need that my functions f at a and b, I don't need that its value is zero. I only need that they are equal. Uh, lambda is the inverse of, uh, of the Helmholtz operator. It, uh, lambda is, is this, right? Ah, important. This equation conserves the same energy as the Kamasa home equation. Okay, and this is crucial to prove these results. Well, the question if I have compatibly supported solutions for this equation, uh, this I am still working, I have a partial answer, but I believe that I can improve the result. Here? Yes. Essentially here is the result that holds for the Kamasa home equation. It still holds for that equation, provided that my functions F and J satisfy these three conditions, okay? For the question of compactly supported solutions for the equation for a fixed time, I have an answer. I think I can improve it, change conditions on the function J. But, and the answer is a consequence of this theorem, okay? In a sense, what this theorem is saying, if I have an initial, if I have a solution emanating from an initial data for the equation and the initial data satisfies this condition. In particular, if I consider uh, initial data compactly supported, it will satisfy this condition, okay? And if my functions F and J satisfy all of my three previous conditions, and in addition, my function J satisfy this condition, then this property 
is inherited by the corresponding solution to any other time. Okay, to any other time, my solution is bounded, right? And more, we can prove that, we can prove the existence of uh, functions phi, epsilon, and r, such that for very large values of x, this expression holds, okay? Phi is non-negative, and if it vanishes at once, it means that my solution itself is zero at that time. And again, from the conservation of energy, my solution is zero everywhere, every time. My function epsilon goes to zero when x goes to infinity. And phi is limited. And this function here, for very big values of x, this function here is irrelevant in that expression. Well, as a consequence, I cannot have a solution of my equation that is compactly supported at any other time. Because if I had, I could take x large enough so that u is compactly supported, u0 is compactly supported. And essentially, I am telling you that this is zero. But since these things holds, this implies that phi is zero, which implies that my solution is zero. Okay. And this answer the question. Okay. Uh, this theorem is essential finish. What I am right now doing to complete it is to see if the condition I impose on G, uh, if I could impose a weaker condition, because with that condition, it works, okay? Well, some comments. Theorems one and two, I proved using uh, similar ideas as those I present in my talk. Theorem three, is, is a very difficult, a very different demonstration in which I use uh, some properties of LP spaces and weight functions, okay? Well, in conclusion, uh, here we discuss some results about unique continuation of solutions using physical properties of the equation, physical motivation of the equation. In particular, we use conservation laws to, to prove the, the uniqueness of the solution and that the solution is zero. And I showed some results that I am working on right now. Thank you.